the marinade. There's no O in marinade. Let's try it one more time. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> the marinade. <laughs> marrow. Marrow. Marinade. Bone, bone marinade. The marinade. The marinade. With Jason Earl. Welcome to The Marinade with Jason Earl, a free-flowing conversation about the creative process with creative people. This is episode 71, and our guest is Carolina Story. Carolina Story is the married musical duo Ben Roberts and Emily Roberts. Their latest record, Dandelion, was released earlier this year, and it is wonderful, y'all. The songs, the playing, the singing, the artwork, it's all delightful check out carolinastory.com for all things carolina story everyone this was so much fun welcome in the morning soft and low so hard to know to whisper all the morning and if I find you away for the darkness you gotta find Before we get to our conversation with Carolina's story, I'd like to encourage you to follow The Marinade on Twitter and Instagram and over at marinadepodcast.com for all things The Marinade. Give us a rating on your podcast app and subscribe while you're there. Those are all free ways to support the show. Just tell a friend about the show. That's a, a big way that you can spread the word. If you really like what we're doing, please consider joining our Patreon community where for just a few bucks a month, you can gain access to our Patreon exclusive show, Jason's Journey, where I talk about the moments that shape my creative life. Also our Patreon happy hours, where we connect on a deep level via the Zoom machine on the internet. Uh, It's so much fun. Sometimes we have a special guest stop by to share their art with us. Um, So if you can swing it, that's greatly appreciated. More than any of the above, we're just grateful that you listen. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. My conversation with Carolina Story. What's up? Hey. Hey, Emily. How's it going? Good. How are y'all doing? Oh, we're frozen here. I think you're frozen. Am I frozen? Oh, right out the gate. There we go. Off to a, there we go. a you are swimming frozen. start. It may be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, uh, technology is... Um, I feel like it, the the whole thing about like it's a, I feel like I'm good at it, but I'm I apparently I'm suck at it. It's like I, I feel like I'm one yeah, of those well, people, we, right? We know we suck at it, so we <laughs> really suck at it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny all these things that that this world we live in now is, uh, is illuminating, yeah. right? So many different things. No doubt. Like, I was so cocky almost about how good I was with technology, and then I'm just like. Right. I'm frozen on your screen, right? So, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, thank y'all so much. Your record is beautiful, and I'm thank so you, excited to talk about it. I mean, you know, I was thinking about it right before you, right before we connected. I was thinking about how, when 
when I, when we first started setting up this interview, I was, uh, I was listening to your record. I was uh, emailing about some logistics about uh, the interview. And then I happened to check Twitter as I uh, compulsively do. And one yep. of our, uh, one of our biggest fans of the marinade was, was tweeting about your record and how much he loved it at the same moment. And I was like, wow, oh, oh that's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's to be, what, then. Right. That's what I thought. So who, who, who would that his, be? His name is Zach Schultz. He's okay. Up, he's up in Minnesota. He's a great, yep. great guy. Great fan of, of music and uh, especially country music and Americana music, yeah. and rock and roll. And um, where are you? I'm in Orlando. Okay. Yeah, man. Boy, yeah. I wish I was in, in Orlando, Orlando right now. <laughs> Y'all, it is. So it was 66 There's, degrees Fahrenheit this morning. And now it is like seven. It's like 79 or 80, which for us is just so good. You know? I know, nice. so man. The last two days here have been like high 50s, low 60s. It has been it, with sun. Yeah, it's been it's awesome. Beautiful. Man. Awesome. Yeah. It's I'm feeling good. And so I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that we get to talk about your beautiful record right now with, with all this wonderful um, weather. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you guys about, cause I did a bunch of research uh, as I always do, but I didn't get a whole lot of, I didn't find a whole lot on your origin story as a couple. I saw some pieces mm. about how the band came together, but I'm curious about you guys coming together and, and the music thing and the, the timeline on that yeah 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 are we are we are we rolling we're always we? rolling baby soon we're rolling. Yeah. <laughs> all that all uh, that all that frozen shit's probably gonna be in there like this is, i love this it is real love it. <laughs> let it go yeah. um we'll, yeah we'll talk and, about kids later yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um well the reason we were a minute late for the podcast is we've got two kids so and we were getting them set up yeah, yeah. so we may even hear them you know right um so Anyway, we, uh, no, Emily and I met, um, August 3rd, 2007. He um, remembers the date, you yeah. know, he's got him in shape. Remember the date I was just moving to Memphis and, uh, mm -hmm. we were both, Emily had been in Memphis for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, going to a small music college there. And yeah, I helped her move a, uh, a couch into her dorm room, uh, which, the dorms we can talk about the school a little bit yeah. um it's it was like sort of in its genesis you know or at its genesis not not too far after uh the school was started i think the school had been around for like seven or eight years yeah, so it was long. new and the school was set up in an old catfish restaurant and the dorms were the days in across the street um <laughs> So it still was an active days in hotel. Yeah. So you could, so, you know, on one side you've got, and it was pretty sketchy on yeah. one side you had, you know, just nothing but drug deals and plugs happening. And, uh, the other and, side was a bunch of innocent college students. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was unreal. Um, wow. but I, I feel like it was setting us up for the, uh, the touring lifestyle, you yeah. know, in and out of hotels and this and that. But anyway, we, um, yeah, I mean, I, it was sort of, you know, if there is such a thing, it was, I was smitten at first, at sight, you know, first sight, love at first sight, and, and uh, Emily was not at all. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I was like... playing, she was playing hard, <laughs> she was playing hard to get, and, um, and I think I was a little too. Uh, yeah, you were a little too obnoxious, and, you know, he was trying real hard for my attention, and. A for effort. For yeah, sure. yeah, A plus there. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, and I just was like, almost like from a, never served in the military, but from a military mindset, like strategizing and how can I, how can I just like, you know, get in a room with her and convince her just to go out with me, you know, and um, I yeah. found out that she loved Brandy Carlisle. Um, I found out that that was her, you know, her favorite artist uh, at yeah. the time and mm -hmm. still is. It was a recent, she was a recent discovery of mine. I think that was the album, The Story came out. So yeah, it had just come out. Uh, when Ben found that out, he learned a lot of the music from that record. So I'd be walking by, you know, his door at the Days In, and he'd be, <laughs> you know, just strumming along to something. To a brand, yeah, yeah. Brand, one, of the, one of the songs off of that album. And 
So then I was like, okay, let's okay. let's try this. So I would sing, you know, one of her songs and he'd play guitar and just started hanging out a lot more. And yeah, I think that, that was, was finally the, the convincing point for me was. Yeah, so the music came first, you know, it was like almost music was, a, you know, the gateway into our, our relationship, you know. Um, so we, we obviously hold Brandy and, and that album and, you know, we all, we, we already would have, but yeah. you know, she's, she's a big part of our story. So we hold her in a pretty high regard, you know, because mm -hmm. the first song we sang together was a song called Josephine off of that album. So, you know, yeah. and then, yeah. So much of that r resonates. I mean, first of all, my, my origin story with, with my partner, my version's like 45 minutes long and her version's like, two and a half yeah um, for, for similar reasons um but uh but the brandy carlisle thing when i think about in in uh ben you've described the sound of uh of your work as like nirvana kana that kind of thing mm -hmm. um so the brandy thing makes so much sense right i mean she even just recorded Soundgarden covers <laughs> right? i know <laughs> exactly no doubt man so yeah so i i do want to kind of talk about that one. too like that because that comes through like i i don't I, tr I always hesitate to compare artists of course but the especially the that first track on on dandelion sounds uh makes me feel old whiskey town and six stream drag and that that alt country kind of stuff that i just gravitate toward right as soon as yeah. i heard that yeah. song i was like oh this is this is my jam this is the kind yeah. of stuff i'm into you know yeah man i mean we're like we both love you know emily loves 60s and 70s you know psychedelic kind of rock and and country yeah and i do too I, you know hank williams senior is one of my favorite, favorite songwriters but you know i i i love the 90 i love 90s um alternative you know rock you know bands like you know everything from rem to third eye blind and obviously nirvana you know I mean, so we really, the Gin Blossoms, yeah. um, you know, in Whiskey Town and Ryan Adams in general, um, if we can say his name, um, <laughs> is, uh, you know, it's one of my biggest influences. Um, and Neil Young, and it's all been. Yeah, it's a mashup of just kind of a classic country, but then also 90s rock. Yeah, and when, our, when we met our producer and I started writing with him, uh, his name's Paul Moak, and he has just the most amazing studio uh, called The Smokestack. You feel like you're not in nashville for one which is you know was really kind of the a big catalyst and, mm -hmm. and a big thing for us to record this record and feel like we were getting out of town but could still go home um you know he we started writing together and it was um you know there was something there you know we we clicked and he's a he's a rock guy you know nirvana is his one of his favorite bands and we really connected in that way you know just talking about our influences and the more and more we talked, it was like, man, that's one of my favorite songs. That's one of my favorite bands. And he sat us down one day and he played uh, the Jayhawks, Rainy Day Music, uh, and Lucinda Williams' World Without Tears. Both albums we had never even heard. I mean, which is insane, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's so much music out there, but um, yeah, you'd always heard of the Jayhawks, but. Yeah, we just started to obsess over that Rainy Day Music album um as a whole i i think i listened to it at least weekly still from the first yeah. point i was told about it um but yeah it just it was a great just to have that connection with the producer right off the bat like we just knew we were going to make something magical you know yeah so we were like especially after obsessing over that album it was like you know it had a lot of the folk sensibilities and things that we loved and um we were like, man, let's do our best, you know, while, while remaining ourselves to push our sound, you know, and push ourselves and really, you know, kind of a mashup of like, we've been saying that sort of sixties and seventies and, but also nineties alternative influences, you know? So right. we had a lot of fun doing it. That's great. What is, is that? What typically for you guys, what does that process look like? What is the, what does the writing process look like, especially as a duo and a married duo? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we've been married 11 years, so just the songwriting process has changed so, so much over the years. At the beginning, it was such this, it was a honeymoon phase for us, and uh, writing together just seemed so, you know, in, just instantaneous, ran, you know, spontaneous. Right, it now was, we avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we, I mean, 
it's it's changed because you know we have kids now and and it was more you know a 50 50 thing or kind yeah. of you know a tug of war in a good way um mm -hmm. early on and then we welcomed a baby boy back in 2013 and i've kind of been in that mommy mode ever since um and which has been good for our relationship. I think we needed that. I think we needed to find ourselves individually as well. And uh, so I've kind of taken another creative outlet, whether that's pottery and um, painting, uh, painting okay. other art forms, where Ben has always been a well of writing. Like he's been writing songs since he was 12 years old. Yeah, and that really like I think once we sort of let go, you know, because they're there for just a short time. Yeah, it was like there was tension there, and like man, you know, you know, she's she's busy being a mother. I mean, I'm a fa being a father too, but I mean, you can't ever tell me. I mean, being yeah. a mother is is a, is a tougher gig if you ask me. And um, you know, and I think and it's just something you're naturally really really good at. Like I, when you met me, I was kind of just starting to write right. you know and um and i still do enjoy it but i just it, again it just was good for our marriage because we are working together we <laughs> are raising children together we're doing you know there's so many things we're doing together that i feel like in this season of life it's been kind of great for us to you know experiment in other ways for yeah sure. it, yeah it felt like once we like you said kind of broke off and and found our our lane you know and what you know, creative lane, it, it's, I feel like the doors kind of, yeah, the, the, you know, more songs came and stuff, you know. Yeah, um, through that. And don't get me wrong, I'm still the editor of all of yeah, yeah, songs. She's, she's <laughs> <laughs> he brings them to me, or I give him an idea for something, and yeah, she's really he goes down off into his dark cave and comes up with something, and I'm, you know, I and get it's to be never the good first, enough. Yeah, I get to be the first <laughs> one. Like, no, I think that's no, yeah. not So, right. no, it's, you know, yeah, she, she definitely, you know, but I think that's, I think that's a, I don't know, in a strange way, that's, that's been more fun to collaborate in that way, like individually and then bring it together and, and trim the fat, you know? Yeah. So. How comfortable are you, Ben, when Emily comes back with some edits? How comfortable <laughs> are you with those edits uh, and even that feedback? Well, I'm pretty sensitive. I'm a sensitive <laughs> soul and, uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve too, so she can she can tell if she's upset. Me yeah, or not. I'm not too mean, you know. I'll just take my ball and go home. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, man. We you know we talk about it a lot on the show, and I wonder if you guys have learned any lessons about that, about giving and receiving feedback, um, especially mm -hmm. again, especially in a relationship, but because that's such a key part of being in a relationship in general, right? Is giving and receiving For sure. feedback. So in the creative process, have you learned any yeah. lessons about how to, how to give it and then also how to receive it? Mm. That's, that's, a, good, good, that's yeah. a really good question. Yeah. And again, I, I would just say like, I also try not to be, you know, cause that is, that's just such a pure form of someone's creativity for, so for me to come in and be like, this isn't, you know, it, it's, yeah, been, I mean, we joke about it, but yeah. she, she doesn't been, rip me hard, you know? Well, what's great about again, our relationship is we are so open and honest with one another that I know when he brings me a song, if it, if it, it doesn't kind of like tug at my heart, then I know that that may be something for another project that he would love to do down the yeah. road. Or I'm like, yeah, that does feel like Carolina's story to me. So there's still that. Yeah. While there is creative criticism and stuff, um, you know, changing a few lines here or coming at it from a different angle, I, you know, sometimes it, it's, it actually kind of sifts itself out naturally a little bit. You know, yeah. we know each other, each other's, you know, every move and, and just kind of, you know, we know what each other is thinking at this point. And, you know, those things sort of tend to work out, you know, I'll, you know, and I started doing a lot more co-writing as well in the last, you know, uh, two and a half, three years. Um, here in Nashville which was something that was new to me you know I had always written by myself or with her and um you know that's been really cool too to, to bring in other people other friends people mm -hmm. that you trust and and even sometimes perfect strangers you know that you end up with a with a great song um and so, and this was our first project that a lot of the songs were co-written with other people you know outside of ourselves so um it's always evolving always mm -hmm. changing 
and we're just rolling with the punches, you know? Right. Well, speaking of evolving and changing, um, Emily, your voice is out there a little bit more on this record than the previous mm -hmm. one. Can you talk about that decision and uh, how that came about? Yeah. Um, I think with the last album release, again, I had a, I think it was a newborn baby and a three-year-old at the time. So my hands were so full and, but I still like Carolina story is actually, we always refer to, to it as our first child. Like we've been mothering it for the last. Ready for it to start mowing the grass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. So in this record, I feel, you know, a little bit more established as a mother and like I said, I've been doing other things creatively that it just put me back in that headspace of wanting to kind of be back, you know, in the forefront with Ben, yeah. like we were at the beginning, you know, it, it definitely, like Ben says, has evolved so much because at the beginning, it was a lot of my songs, actually. Um, and then, you know, it evolved into this one voice thing that we were doing, singing simultaneously together. And now this record I do feel like it's an equal um lead vocal type project so it's just been really really fun to to change it up in that way yeah and we we but we want we were intentional about that you yeah know, it, we were you know like Emily's saying you know while we were you know while we had little kids and we still do I mean we have a six-year-old and a soon to be three-year-old but when our son was little it was like I was kind of carrying Carolina's story a bit and I don't mean mm -hmm. you know you've said that yourself I, that doesn't mean that she wasn't involved but um I was kind of toting the rock and then it was like man with this one you know we really want to you know and she was excited again mm -hmm. and and it it was like we had you know the skies had sort of cleared a little bit and and we were like we really want to uh showcase you more you know mm -hmm. uh, her voice and and really I, w I would go into song rights even sometimes like some of the songs on the album i specifically went in with our producer paul moak or with other people going okay you know emily's not here but i want to write a song that that she can sing you know like let's let's come at it from that angle and specifically see you when i see you which is this, uh, the third song on the album that was a song that we we knew she was going to sing you know yeah and I think too, being married that uh, even if I'm not a writer in the room, I think Ben subconsciously even knows like what I'm going through. Yeah. That's another element that's really neat yeah. to see as a songwriter. Um, it's fun kinda, to get outside of my own head. Too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we knew that we knew that we wanted to, to evolve and push the envelope a little bit more, especially vocally. Um, so yeah, that was that was like the easiest step was well, why doesn't Emily just sing more lead? You know, yeah. I'll shut up. You know, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, and we had heard we had heard too from our fans, you know, yeah. for years. Like uh. we, you know, get done playing the show, and it's like, man, you guys were great, but why doesn't she sing more? <laughs> Which I was, you know, so good show, fun. good show, guys. Now shut up, Ben. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Anyway, so we, you know, we knew with this project that that was something we wanted to do. So. That's great. That's and I think great. we'll continue to do that, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, from, from my perspective as a fan and a consumer of it, I, I think it, the balance is so, is so great. You, you both bring mm -hmm. something different and it, it's mm -hmm. not, I like that. I like the, the, the flavor is different, but it's still that same sound. It still sounds like you're a coherent, uh, consistent work, but then you each bring a different a different vibe to a different sound to yeah it, so. for sure and there were even times during the making of the album when, when emily would be like you know hey paul you know our producer should you know should i do a, a a harmony in the in the verse here or or i would say the same you know should should i harmonize here you know throw a harmony in and he was like no you know you guys are you're trying to go back to your old kind of tricks like this, this song particularly needs sort of a singular you know, lonelier one character voice, you know? And so really thinking about it that way too, just what serves the song best um, yeah. was something that, you know, that's something that I, I've learned, you know, in the last year that's going to help us another little thing to put in the bag of tricks. So. Right. 
You mentioned, Emily, pottery and painting, other visual arts earlier. And then the visual aspect of the record is its whole other thing that, that I'd like to dive into. Can you guys talk about how, like what, what, that, what the inspiration was and how that came together um, and, and how much your work in visual art kind of helped inform all of that? Yeah, definitely. We, uh, um, I just remember dandelion was a word that I felt would be like, just such a beautiful word to be sung, you know, cause there's some words you say and you're like, that would sing awful. Like, <laughs> but dandelion, it just, the beauty of it. And then we got to just talking about, yeah, we talked one. The, it's a resilient, we, formidable weed that just can grow anywhere, you know? Yeah. So and, yeah. Emily started just talking about it one night. And this was before we even, I mean, we were kind of writing for the record and stuff, but it was like, yeah, it, it was like, man, the dandelion, when you think about it, is a lot like people, you know, um, resilient and, you know, it's out in the elements. Everybody's always trying to put uh, a roundup or something on it, get rid of it, you know, <laughs> but you see it everywhere. And um, so when we started talking about that, we were like, man, that could be a super cool theme yeah. for the record, you know? And, and it just, it, it stuck. We, what's uh, the harsh, you know. Yeah, we talked about originally going, well, what, what about an you know, well, uh, Rainy Day Music by the Jayhawks? I love that album cover, the simplicity of it. And so we even talked about, like, how about we just have a picture of a dandelion growing out of, con you know, a crack in a con piece of concrete. But then we're like, no, it's got to be even, like, it's a little too on the nose. obscure than that, you know? And... I don't remember who initially said, but we were just like, what about the moon growing on, or the dandelion growing on the surface Well, we were like, the what's moon? the harshest environment that a plant or a person could <laughs> survive in, in outer space? And then we were like, man, that's kind of out there. And like, you know, we, we, this was the first project we've ever done. You know, album artwork to us has always been sort of a second, second, you know, a, a last thought. And that's, uh, I hate that, but, because it really, this project has taught us, I think that it's so important. And um, man, once we kind of decided on the outer space theme, the moon, yeah. uh, dandelions growing on the moon, we really got really nerdy and yeah. spent, you know, each of us spent hours Just going scouring photos. NASA's. They had dumped a lot of, um, you know, a lot of public domain stuff um, from the moon landings and different things, videos and, and images and we really really dug and dug and dug and we landed on pun intended uh, the, uh, <laughs> you know the second moon landing which um 1969 they landed november 19th 1969 and we started the album november 18th 2019 so you know 50 years Wow. apart and it, once we once we sort of like figured that out it was like yeah man let's try and find as much stuff from the second moon landing um and yeah apollo 12 there's 12 12 songs on the album um it was the second moon landing this is our second second album, album. we kind of we really geeked out yeah and then that. they landed they landed in an, uh, an area of the moon uh called ocean of storms and you know, with the dandelion, you know, throughout the, the yeah, album, the, the lyrics are riddled with weather elements. And so it, it, it was like it all kind of came together. And then we were like, man, let's start putting dandelion patches on people's, on the astronauts' arms or dandelions on the rocket. It's like, it's almost like this national, this uh, alternate reality where, where the dandelion is a symbol of hope, you know? Um, so, yeah, and then we just had fun with it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So. That is fun. That is so great. And you know, when, know. that word when you mention how because dandelion, like you said, dandelion is not the the kind of thing that you initially think of in a hopeful way, or you don't think of in a beautiful way. But but once I started thinking about that as a theme, I realized like some of my fondest memories as a kid were at my great grandmother's house picking dandelions mm -hmm. and you know blowing <laughs> making a wish. And, yeah, making a wish. You know, it's like. It feels like I did that 10 times a day. I probably did do that 10 times a day. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that it's, nostalgic thing really like that that was the, a big part of it too. Yeah. Just the nostalgia of that and getting back to a little bit of innocence, you know? And um, yeah, so it was like once we once we discovered that word and that plant and, and you know, we were just off to the we races and it was, it was yeah. a lot of fun. And I, 
I loved coming at it that way. I mean, dare I say, we might have had more fun doing the artwork than actually, <laughs> than the music. That's so, great. Good. It was a lot of fun, man. That's awesome. Y'all, this has been such a pleasure. We always end on what you're getting down on. So what what kind of, what the art is inspiring you right now? What music, paintings, I don't know, maybe a book you read recently. What yeah. are you fired up about right now? Man. Art-wise. Man, we've, we've been hard on uh, into some Mary Oliver. Mm -hmm. Emily turned us onto that um, during kind of a little bit right before the making of the album and we just can't get enough of reading Mary Oliver her poems. Mm -hmm. It's a but, good start to your morning. Yeah man. A, a nice short Mary Oliver poem. We don't even need coffee anymore we just read three <laughs> Mary Oliver poems. But <laughs> Yeah I've kind of I just I love to dabble in all things arts and um so I, right now uh we live near the harpeth river and i have ben and wilder our son collecting driftwood for me yeah. and i have been finding ways uh to make some art with driftwood um cool. has been my my latest obsession so. yeah, like driftwood with like wind chimes and yeah. stuff yeah. oh dumb. Um, yeah what have we been listening to courtney marie andrews new album yeah uh, old, old flowers, flowers. is unreal and and on constant spins mm -hmm. um and also gets the get stan gets gilberto album There's some some you know instrumental um, <laughs> some jazz i don't know yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great and always nirvana we're yeah. always, <laughs> listening, always listening to kurt or watching old interviews so <laughs> that's great that is great man Y'all, this has been such a pleasure. The record is beautiful. You guys were so great, gracious with your time, and I'm so thankful for this. And um, thank you for that beautiful record. And uh, hopefully, for yeah, hopefully y'all can. You're welcome. Hopefully y'all can get down here sometime soon and yeah. play some shows, and we can well, meet man, in we person, were, break bread. I know, <laughs> yes. I know we were we were supposed to be in Florida with Hayes Carl, uh, oh. right? Right. I mean, I think last week. Or yeah, so. most of <laughs> September we were supposed to be in Florida. In Florida, but. Make better yeah. luck next year. Yeah, know? I'll come back with Hayes and I got to get him on the show and we yeah. hang out because, um, for sure, man. Tell you what, I'm, we're all starving for it and, um, you know, hopefully we can get it going pretty soon. But in the meantime, you put out a beautiful record and I appreciate Thank it. All. You. Thank Thanks, you. man. Take care. All right. Cheers. See ya. Bye. Never seen a river ever stop to rest, roll into the ocean. Hold myself together with the needle and the thread of madness in the ocean. You got to find your way through the dark. Carolina Story, y'all. Thank you, you so much to Ben and Emily. That was so much fun. You know, normally this is where I would uh, would talk about the art that is inspiring me at the moment, the what I'm getting down on. But uh, I'm recording this the day after the U.S. presidential election was called in favor of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Um, you know, I, after my last episode, I urged everybody to vote. And um, uh, of course, I, I don't shy from politics uh, on this show or policy. There are certain things that I think we can debate and I'm excited to start having those debates again. I feel like we can finally, you know, I want somebody to change my mind about gun policy. I want somebody to change my mind about health care because you know what? I don't have the answers to those things. I have ideas and they're, um, they're rooted in facts and experiences, but that doesn't mean I'm right. And my, my views have changed uh, dramatically on, on everything just about over my lifetime. And as I approach 40, uh, I'll be 40 in uh, right out a month now, less than a month, I'll be 40 years old. Um, I hope that in the next 40 years of my life, that I change my mind about some things because the world changes and things change and I'm going to change and that's good. But what will not change is that the marinade will always be a place for inclusion it will always be a uh, a place that believes black lives matter it will always be a place that believes that people should love who they want to love and not be persecuted for it and not be excluded for it so if if you think that's political um and if you think and if you don't agree with that this might not be the place for you uh i don't think anybody who listens to this show feels that way i don't think anybody who listens to the show regularly is a bigot but um, the last four years weren't about policy. Um, they were about 
a racist man pushing a racist agenda. And then the the next four years will not be that. And I'm going to disagree with Joe Biden on, on plenty, I'm sure. But we're not going to disagree that black lives matter. <laughs> you know, we're not going to disagree that people shouldn't lose their lives uh, by the hands of the police. <laughs> you know, there are just certain things that I feel like uh, should not be political. Uh, it shouldn't be controversial, I should say. They are political, but they should be contra- controversial. And uh, the statement black lives matter shouldn't be controversial. And it is for for President Trump and his supporters. So they can fuck off. Um, and uh, thank you to those of you <laughs> who don't think that way, which I think is everybody who listens to this show. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I think we can have reasonable debates about things. And I, I will be wrong sometimes. Um, I was wrong about abortion for most of my life. Uh, you know, I was wrong about a woman's right to choose, I should say, for most of my life. Um, and I only recently have come around to understanding that I was wrong and that, um, that abortion should be a fundamental right. Uh, if, if a woman chooses that she should choose what she does to her body, uh, and what's being done to her body. Um, I never saw it that way. Well, you know what? I got convinced and I was shown the light and I, I will change my mind about other things, you know, and I hope that's true for for all of us i hope that we can have nuanced conversations again <laughs> i just had this conversation uh, a couple days ago about the minimum wage amendment that passed in florida so florida uh, we have this provision in our constitution where you can amend it via referendum essentially it takes a 60 percent uh, threshold of voters to pass an amendment to the florida constitution Um, every major election, we have constitutional amendments on the ballot. One of the the more famous ones recently was that we restored the rights of convicted felons to vote. Of course, our piece of shit racist governor, um, is, uh, working to combat that. And, um, you know, we eventually will replace his racist ass too. But, uh, but it can be a really a force for good, but it can also be kind of a strange thing. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff in the Florida Constitution. I know that's shocking to y'all, but there's a lot of weird stuff as a result of referendum because people, you know, get excited about something and maybe don't understand the ramifications of it. So my, my approach to the amendments is, unless it's something like the felon voting rights, which is very clearly something in my mind that that should happen, is that people should have the right to vote regardless of the choices that they've made um, or the, the the things that have been forced upon them. That is very clear in my mind. And so, yeah, let's amend the Constitution uh, via referendum. But some things I, I vote no on even if I agree with them or, or think I agree with them. Anyway, there was one about the, uh, to, to raise the min- minimum wage in Florida to $15 an hour, which I think is I think is probably a good thing. But honestly... I'm not a small business owner. I'm not someone who has has lived in that world very much. And I don't fully understand the uh, the consequences of doing something like that. So I think the legislature needs to make decisions like that. The argument that other people make is, well, the legislature has had plenty of opportunities to make those decisions and hasn't done it. So anyway, I voted no on that one. Well, I talked to a good friend who is a, a small business owner and he, I think, convinced me that I was wrong. <laughs> so it's too late now. I already voted, and it's and it doesn't matter because the, the amendment passed. But it was just a great conversation, and I, I want to get back to that. I want to be proven wrong. I, I, I want people to change my mind about things that aren't matters of immutable characteristics. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't – I think – things change and, and, and policies change, uh, over time. But, uh, but that's not what we just went through. We just went through four years of not that we went through four years of, um, the only thing that the Republican party led by Donald Trump was running on was that Brown people are bad. Um, and fuck that. I love y'all. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Exhale. Until next time, go out and create something. Cheers, y'all.